Now at five, an overtime thriller. The Texans tackling their in-state rivals in a wild finish. We have the highlights, the reaction from the team, and this morning we're also getting your take. Plus the campaign trail heating up in the race for a Senate seat here in Texas. What Senator Ted Cruz and Congressman Beto O'Rourke have on their agendas today, including a big endorsement for one of them. And looking for some extra cash for the holiday season? We'll tell you who's hiring and how you can land that job this week. From the KHOU 11 studios, this is H-Town Rush. And good morning. Welcome to H-Town Rush, everybody, on this Monday, October 8th. I'm Russ Lewis. And I'm Lisa Hernandez. Much more on that big Texans win mm -hmm. coming up. But first, Cheetah gets our rush block started with some weather. Hey, Cheetah. Good morning, guys. We're still starting off sticky, steamy for your Monday morning. So no big changes right now. But I've got two fronts to talk about that I think will perk you up even on a Monday morning. This nice little shower sitting pretty much right over Liverpool at this point. So if you're waking up in Brazoria County this morning, you've already seen some passing showers. Your roadways may be wet. Otherwise, Big weather headlines today. Strong hurricane expected for the Florida coastline by the end of the week. I'm going to have details on that coming up in about eight minutes. Two fronts on the way. Woohoo! That's going to impact us. And that fall feel will really start to impact your Sunday. So we got to get through the work week. High temperatures today pushing 90 with about a 40% chance for a few of those showers. Doug, I'll talk more about the rain, that uh, tropical storm Michael, and of course those fall fronts coming up next. Okay, thank you, Cheetah. I'm checking out your drive times on the North Freeway for your rush block traffic this morning. You see 14 88 to downtown as you come in from Montgomery County. No issues slowing you down. You're moving nicely 72 miles per hour for that average speed. Hardy Toll Road, the East Tex Freeway also looking good as you come in from Kingwood, Humble. Good morning to you guys. A live look from Houston Transtar shows. Traffic still pretty light there at Bellway 8. Now outbound on 290. All lanes are still shut down right now due to a single vehicle wreck that happened about an hour ago. You're being forced onto the frontage road for now. Not worth a detour because traffic is still pretty light right now. Guys. I right, Doug, thank you. It's two minutes after. It was a late one, but we are still <laughs> celebrating this victory Monday for the Texans. The home team picking up that big overtime win last night against the Dallas Cowboys. Daniel Gotera has the highlights and the reaction from the team. Well, it wasn't easy. It definitely wasn't pretty, but the Texans will take it. They need overtime to take down the Cowboys 1916 in a game that featured so many ups and downs, so many questionable coaching decisions, especially near the goal line. Texans won for five in the red zone. They kicked field goals of 19, 20 and 21 yards. But they still got the win. It was a gut check victory. They needed to get this one at home to keep building momentum as they go further on in this season. Um, I think we about had enough of overtimes, huh? <laughs> nah, it was um, it was a good victory. The heart, the guts, the will, the determination. I mean, everything kind of just goes in into the you know these last two wins, especially in overtime. You know, finishing the deal. Now the Texans move on. Buffalo comes to town next week, so you got to think that victory could put them back in 500 and keep them in this division race, especially after that 0-3 start. That is definitely good news for this squad. At NRG Stadium, Daniel Gotera, KHU 11 Sports. And we'll have much more on the Texans, including how fans are reacting on social media, coming up in just a few minutes. Right now, it's three minutes after a big day of campaigning in our Senate race. Ted Cruz and Beto O'Rourke both have events planned today. Our Michelle Choi is joining us now to tell us about both. Michelle? Russ, with less than a month to go until Texans head to the polls, both candidates are very busy and working hard. In fact, tonight, Democratic Congressman Beto O'Rourke will be in Houston. He'll be hosting a voter registration concert right here at White Oak Music Hall, featuring special guests Houston Texans' Arian Foster and Houston rapper Bun B. But before all that, he'll continue his college campus tours. Now, he'll be visiting three college campuses around the area. First, he'll be at Lone Star College at noon today, and tomorrow he'll speak at both Texas Southern University and Rice University. Now, this is all part of his Fight for the Future week-long tour, where he'll be talking about issues centered around young people at college and university campuses. And both Senate candidates are eager to get out the vote. According to the Texas Tribune, Vice President Mike Pence will be in Dallas today campaigning for Senator Ted Cruz. He's back in Texas after being in D.C. for the Kavanaugh vote. Cruz spent the weekend knocking on doors here in Houston. And as for that voter registration concert, it's set to begin tonight at 6.30. Guys, back to you. The block continues now with the day's other big story, starting with a woman's body found in a retention pond in Fort Bend County. Investigators say the woman was reported missing on Friday. They haven't released her identity yet. They found her near the Cambridge Falls neighborhood, and it's still unclear how she died. 
20 people were killed in upstate New York when the stretch limousine they were riding in ran a stop sign, crashed into a parked SUV, and ended up in a ravine. This is one of the biggest loss of lives that we've seen uh, in a long, long time. The NTSB is investigating what caused that crash. A new UN report on global warming warns of a life or death situation. The International Panel of Scientists says we need to limit human-caused warming to less than one degree Fahrenheit. They say it would prevent more heat waves and droughts. President Trump will hold a ceremony for his new Supreme Court justice tonight at the White House. I stand before you today on the heels of a tremendous victory for our nation. Brett Kavanaugh was sworn in on Saturday after a 50 to 48 confirmation vote in the Senate. And the Astros take on the Indians in Cleveland for game three of the ALDS. A win means they advance to the next round. The Astros are hosting a free watch party at Minute Maid Park. First pitch this afternoon at 12.30. And that is your Rush Block. Let us know what's happening in your world. Just tweet us using the hashtag HTownRush. All right, back to that big Texans victory. They've won two in a row now, and fans are pretty excited this morning. Doug's here with your reaction. Assuming those fans are up uh, after that late night win, Doug. <laughs> no, I stayed up for it. If I can be here, they can probably be watching us as well. It was pretty much the perfect weekend for Houston sports. Of course, uh, the Texans won. The Astros won. Oh, yeah, and the Rockets won, too. That was a preseason game. But, hey, that brings us to our live poll this morning. What was the most exciting Houston sports win of the weekend? Head on over to KHLU.com slash vote now and weigh in. Take a look at some of the top tweets from overnight. And I love this. Sabisa Pizza is here saying, this team, the Texans, they are back. Still a few things to clean up, but I have faith this is going to be a good season. I think that was a big uh, lift to people's spirits last night. Houston Chronicle uh, tweeting this, mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be Cowboys. Famous Willie Nelson song right, uh, written by Ed Bruce. Adam Schefter tweeting from ESPN saying last week the Colts went for it on fourth down in overtime. They didn't get it. The Texans won in overtime. This week the Cowboys punted on fourth and shorter and Texans won again in overtime. Two different coaching approaches yielding the same result. Waterburger also having one of the top tweets from overnight saying technically the Cowboys and Texans both win because they live in a Waterburger state. You know, a lot of people like that. I think 8,000 people click like on that. And lastly, I love this moment. In case you didn't see it from last night, the Texans tweeting the game ball goes to Mamas, DeAndre Hopkins, giving the game ball to his mom down there in the end zone. I love that. That's a, just a sweet <laughs> little moment Very there. Sweet. And I'm sure that most uh, sports fans this weekend are just loving everything about this weekend. That's right. Unless you're an OU fan. But yes, UT That's won true. as well. Yeah. So there's that true. too. <laughs> okay, yeah. we'll take it. Well, let's keep it rolling too with the Strohs playing this yes. afternoon, right? That's right. Uh -huh. That's so right. let's don't end this weekend. Watch the party at Minute Maid today. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. Let's go over to Cheeto right now. You're watching Michael this morning. Yes, Tropical yeah. Storm Michael. I know a lot of people along the Gulf Coast are watching very closely. So uh, first piece of information though, this is not a threat to the Texas coastline. This will remain east of us and really most models pretty unanimous right now uh, as far as uh, when it's going to make landfall and where it's going to make landfall. We're talking about the Texas Panhandle and notice again, I wanted to show you all the spaghetti plots, all the models here saying it's remaining east of uh, Texas and that's all thanks to a couple fronts that are on the way. I'm going to show you that coming up next, but that's really going to what's going to help us out. So Tropical Storm Michael right now expected to gain strength to a cat one hurricane today and then just before lake and man landfall potentially a category two hurricane again right along the florida panhandle so already warnings out uh, residents are being warned this uh this past weekend and really over the next couple of days because once it gains intensity and strength that will be kind of a straight shot northward so i'll walk you day by day here today we're looking at scattered showers across the area about a 40 percent chance this afternoon front arrives by wednesday so really by Thursday and Friday, you'll notice a difference overnight and with the humidity. Second front really helps that impact and that fall feel will really arrive by Sunday. Temperatures will be topping out in the 60s. Overnight lows will be returning to the 50s, so you will notice the change slightly by Thursday and Friday, but really a better chance by Sunday and pretty much all of next week. Not this morning, though, so I give you all the good information because 70s out the door this morning. Sticky start to the day. High temperatures today go to 90, still very muggy, similar there for your Tuesday, but Doug, by Wednesday, once that front moves out of here, Thursday morning, we will be waking up in the 60s with a nice north wind. Okay, thank you, Cheeto. We have, man, we just have some traffic issues this morning. This is uh, heading westbound on the Katy Freeway out toward Brookshire. So right at the Brazos River, you can see all lanes of the Katy Freeway just shut down, and that's due to an incident involving a vehicle and a big 
big rig and you can see emergency responders already on the scene, but traffic is stacking up. So be aware of that. Another incident that we're monitoring just cleared out of the way. This was southbound on 288. So out toward Pearland, you can see at McCard Road, the crash cleared out of the way. So you're starting to see a little relief from that. Your drive times inbound, not impacted by that 63 miles per hour northbound on those lanes. Now the other incident we're talking about all lanes shut down again on 290 heading westbound, and that's due to a crash that happened a little over an hour ago at Beltway 8. They're forcing you onto the frontage road right now. Traffic is still pretty light, so I wouldn't detour because of it, but give yourself an extra 10, five, five minutes at the very most, and then you can get back on after you pass Jersey Village. Brandy? Got it, Doug. Keeping you busy this morning. It's time for another news. Stories that will snap you out of those Monday morning blues. It's no secret the holidays are pretty expensive, but if you're looking for a little extra cash to pay for all those gifts, Here's some good news. It's holiday hiring season. Several major retailers are holding job fairs over the next week. That includes Target, JCPenney, Best Buy, Macy's, and Kohl's. You can head to their websites for more information on applying. Speaking of the holidays, nothing says you're in the spirit like dressing your pet up for Halloween, right? Apparently a lot of people think so, because Halloween isn't just for humans. The National Retail Federation survey says 31 million people are going to put their furry friends in a costume for All Hallows Eve. In all, pet owners are going to spend nearly $500 million on little itty bitty outfits. The most popular, pumpkins, hot dogs, and bumblebees. If pets could talk, I bet they'd have a little something to say about this. In a perfect world, you'd be able to get your kids to actually fall asleep when you want them to, right? Well, apparently getting your kids tucked in earlier leads to a healthier quality of life overall, or so they say. Researchers in Australia found improvements in family life if children were put to bed earlier. That includes gains in mom's physical and mental health. <laughs> So how do you actually make it happen? That's the hard part. We know it's good for them, but experts say just make a routine and stick with it. Did they leave out the, the, the glass of wine? Is that what they did? Do you have time for a exactly. glass, glass of wine before bed? Oh, and a Netflix yeah. episode, yeah. That's all you need, and then you can go to bed. Anytime. That's one thing I don't play with is that bedtime. That's I mean, good. that's the one thing that's I'm like, good. everything's very disorderly, except for the bedtime routine. <laughs> I'm like, Mark, 7 p.m. Right night night. <laughs> it's 5.12 right now. Still to come this morning. It's been one year since fires ravaged California's wine country. This morning, we're getting a look at how that area is recovering. Plus, social media takes its emojis very seriously. We're going to see what's missing from Apple's new bagel symbol that has started a little bit of a debate.